Congratulations. You found the Twin Cities hit show. Very well. Where do I begin? Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? You're lucky to be here. Thank you, sir. Reach for this one. <laughs> and now, a real hit show. I'm going to have fun, and you're going to have fun. We're all going to have so much fucking fun when we need plastic surgery to remove our goddamn smiles. You'll be whistling symphony doo out of your assholes. Live from the Twin Cities. And I want to look him straight in the eye, and I want to tell him what a cheap, lying, no good, rotten, poor, flushing, low life, snake licking, dirt eating, inbred, over stuff. It's the Twin Cities hit show. Dog kissing, brainless, dickless, hopeless, heartless, fat ass, bug eyed, stiff legged, spotty lip, worm headed sack of monkey shit he is. Hallelujah! Holy shit! Where's the Tylenol? Let's get this hit show started. Your mic was open that whole time. I didn't even... Yeah, sorry about that. I get very excited and very emotional. That was a whole Come... tra- trail of... Yeah. Us words. It comes out in a slew of just angry, angry, poopy words, and I'm sorry about that. You need to apologize to Colleen Justice. Yeah, I will when next time I see her. Look across the studio. Oh my God! Hi. Hello. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. That's that was wrong. For that was reason. actually Chevy Chase from two two different vacation movies. First bit you heard was from the original Vacation. The second one was from Christmas Vacation. Did you guys like those vacation movies? Yeah. I mean, I, I haven't seen them in a long time. Do they hold up? The Christmas one still makes me laugh. I mean, it's, you know, yeah. it, they hold up sort of. It's they have time funny they moments. Funny. Yeah. yeah. Great lines. It's one of those things that everybody has a line they can quote from it, but would I watch <laughs> it again and again? Like Three Amigos to me still holds up. Ah, really? Love that movie. You might be the first person I've ever heard that said something. I mean, it looks funny. Oh. I've seen little bits and pieces of it. but I just grew up yeah. watching it, and then my kids watch it now. It's great. I was, uh, when I was putting the... Uh, show open together i was looking at the clips and i was like how long ago were these movies because chevy's full head of hair not yeah. a gray hair thin right and christy brinkley was the it girl at yeah i'm so ahead of you forever ago. she still looks great Are you kidding me but he's Please. chevy is in this new vacation movie that opens today and it's like whoa who is that so oh like, yeah like he looks like he ate chevy chase yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. went into a time machine <laughs> with the uh, aged yeah, that'll happen. Wow. Didn't happen to Christy Brinkley. No, I have a, I'm pretty sure she's got a pitcher in her basement. Like, what was the name of that movie? Dorian, Dorian Gray. Gray. Yeah. yeah. It's ugly and huh. gross. Well, I was uh, looking forward to go see, because uh, I have to review the uh, vacation movie on uh, WCCO every Friday morning on <laughs> mid-morning with Jason DeRussia. But uh, you're hearing, Colleen, already that the movie sucks. I did hear that. Damn it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sorry, it does not Tries look too hard and just goes the dirty route the whole time. You know, I look at the reboots of, of some of my favorites, like the Arrested Development and Dumb and Dumber 2, with this virtually the same writers and a lot of the same staff and the same crew, and those suck. I can't imagine what a real attempt to completely reboot it would look like. Well, and I'm... Not I'm one of those people who never really got why Dumb and Dumber was that popular the first time around. I watched it because I went to screen the sequel, and I was glad that Jim Carrey and Jeff Daniels were at least doing the roles again because two other actors tried to do a Dumb and Dumber. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah. Who uh, are they? Yeah. I forget. They just nobody. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. So I went and watched the, the original Dumb and Dumber. I'm like, yeah, I never was a huge fan of this one. I'm like, I don't understand yeah, why people love it so moments. much. It had the, the wasn't the Cohen brothers did that one? The mm-hmm. Cohens, no. <laughs> no, 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 it no, wasn't. No, no, no. Oh, I thought you were kidding. I just fairly, fairly brothers. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> fairly brothers. Same that's thing. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah, same thing. Uh, uh, very con- dark. And that's considered one of their big, bigger hits. Uh, what about Mary? Was that was a great movie? Fairly brothers. Yeah. That was that was, yeah. in my opinion, funnier because it just wasn't all so silly, stupid, mm-hmm. like mentally dumb, stupid. Well, well it was, it was, I guess the title should have warned me. <laughs> Dumb yeah. and dumber. It was base humor, but I still yeah. laugh at that stuff. Farts? Are you kidding me? So Ed Helms <laughs> plays the grown-up Rusty. Love him. From uh, the character's name was Rusty in the original Vacation. Yeah, I know that. There's, that drives me. Ever still use the line. Good talk, Rusty. 
and now <laughs> I know you. I'll have to use that and then open for next week if I can find it. So Ed Helms plays the grown-up Rusty uh, Christina Applegate, who became, uh, of course, uh, known for comedy f- because of Married with Children, mm-hmm. and then was very funny in the Anchorman movies, I thought. She's mm-hmm. great. Yeah. Uh, she plays the wife. Yeah, I want to play just the scene from the new Vacation movie, which actually opens in theaters today, but don't go until you hear my review tomorrow morning on WCCO Midmorning with Jason Derajet. Uh I think this is a funny scene. Ed Helms looks like he's an airplane pilot. He comes home. He's got two sons. Um, the younger son is obviously the guy who's got more of the aggressive attitude, and uh, he has just written... Um, uh, you're a vagina on the older brother's uh, guitar. What Kevin did to my guitar? Oh, not again. God, you told mom and dad you have such a vagina. Okay, enough, enough. Now, young man, we talked about the bullying of your older brother. That's right. We don't make fun of someone just because they're a little different from us. I don't have a vagina. I'm just saying that even if you did, it wouldn't be okay for Kevin to tease you about your vagina. No, why are you making it sound like I have a vagina? I know you don't have a vagina. I'm not doing that. Kevin, apologize to your brother, please. Fine, I'm sorry. Now go to your room. I was in my room. Kevin, hang on. There are a lot of boys who are born with vaginas. It's very hard for them. Honey, hmm? what? why? It's a teachable moment, hon. Gender fluidity, right? It's a very serious issue. I'm not gender fluid. It doesn't matter if you are. The point is, your mom and I would love you even if you were completely blank down there. (laughs) Oh, God. So he's almost adopted the Chevy Chase character. But in the movie, Rusty was more whip smart and opinionated than I thought than Chevy's character. Anyway. No, Rusty was the kid. No, I'm saying right, as, but as oh, a kid, he was yeah. oh, he oh, wasn't oh. as doltish as yeah. dad. Now he's become uh, his dad. Okay, seems. I didn't even know that premise. I, I, okay, I got it. Write this down. Nine thirty-eight. Show into the ditch. Okay. <laughs> I know. I, I suck it now. It's a new record. <laughs> yeah. It is pretty good. I thought that scene was kind yeah. of funny, but no, we'll is. see. We'll I, see. Mm. I like Ed Helms. Mm. I love Ed Helms. <laughs> it's actually a great scene. I like that. I mean, it's that's everyone who's parented has I had don't that have moment. A vagina. <laughs> everyone, everyone's had that moment. Yeah, I he, I don't know how old the younger kid is that plays the son, but some I always think too when I let my kid say that stuff to be in a movie. Yes, and I always <laughs> say no. I always say no. It's Dude. like I just wouldn't. I that just, was the controversy that. way back in my day when they did Bad News Bears and Walter Matthau was the curmudgeonly right. coach and the child actors had potty mouths. One of the child actors, uh, especially even Tatum O'Neill, going back even further in Paper Moon, had yeah. to say adult language in from her little child mouth and Hollywood loved it. Brooke Nominated Shields. for an Academy Award. Yeah. Shields was the was it what was the movie? She was the little child prostitute when she was yeah. twelve. There was a oh, nude yeah. scene. She had a nude scene at that age. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that yeah, yeah that's a little what was weird. that baby something. Yeah. Huh. I forget that. That was I didn't see that one. But Paper Moon won the Academy Award and yeah. Tatum O'Neill was the youngest actress ever to win an Academy Award and she played this foul mouthed little girl. Right. So there you go. Hollywood huh. loves that shit. Huh. Seems like they're exposed to it so young now anyway that it's not even funny. I mean, they hear those words quicker than ever because of YouTube. and Because you're their father. And their yeah. father. <laughs> yeah, no, actually, I don't. I really made a point not to swear much around my no, kids. No, We seem to be... Yesterday we were quite low. Can you boost this up maybe just to see? She could like coach this? There they are. Magical, technical things going on. Uh, and I, I know I sound like I have pillows over my head, but that's all right. That's good. A it's a good right look for me. I don't know how the sound. Do you have a cold or allergy? I don't. No, mm. oh, no. I Just crappy cold. equipment here in the studio. Oh. <laughs> I tease. <laughs> I tease the Alive and Social Network and their studio. Uh, you know they're uh, they're still up in arms about this lion shooting mm. dentist of ours. Oh yeah. Did you hear the governor weighed in? Oh, great. No. You did not? No. He, uh, wow, he's he's not a fan either. Here's our governor. Just horrible. I'm just, just, just so disgusted with that man and shoot any lion, but uh, lure a, a, a lion like that out of the, you know, preserve and, and shoot him. I mean, how, how could anybody think that's sport? Just appalling. That was on uh, wow. WCCO, and they actually went into the uh, dentist's background. It's beyond what we've heard. The uh, I guess it's considered poaching. He shot that mm-hmm. bear in Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. Right. He had to pay like two grand in a fine and lost his uh, passport for a year. Yeah. 
Uh, huh. But he also has had some issues at his workplace. Was evidently now he's closing. Oh, f- oh the think? dentist what office. Do you think? Wow. I know it was closed yesterday, but it sounds yeah. like it's going to be closed. Period. Now. Wow. He settled a hundred and twenty-seven thousand uh, dollar lawsuit because some sexual ga- harassment. Sexual yeah. harassment. Oh, oh, guy seems like a boy. total dick. Tool. Yeah. yeah, he does. It's just to me, oh. it's a ama- it's a, it's a little exhausting how up in arms this hap- This is not uncommon that practice. I hope they know. I mean, they that's how they no. hunt. Yeah. Lions and there's a rule they can't be under seven. They only live like what till thirteen. So this lion mm. maybe had another year left. I'm mm. not saying it was the right thing. Mm. Never would do it. Yeah. Totally gross. But that's how they do it. Yeah. And he there was something said that he paid fifty grand versus yeah. the normal one hundred and fifty grand. So he must have had like the bare bones treatment. <laughs> Whoa. And so it was more of like disgruntled hunting people, um, <laughs> like the the, yeah. the guides. That kind of threw him, the B level guys. Right, That's right. Like I relied on a professional guy. Oh, you paid only a right. third of the price. The, Wait, it's normally a hundred and fifty thousand yeah, dollars. Yeah, that's what I had yeah. heard today. But I well thought, worth it, right? And that yeah. it, to behead the, the beast. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know. I that's not my thing. I don't well, know a lot about it. But. Here's uh here's the latest from CBS this morning, going live right from uh, is it Bloomington or Eden Prairie? He's from Eden Prairie. He's from Eden Prairie. 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 Uh, They were at the offices in uh, Bloomington this morning on Network News. Extra day, Palmer! Extra day, Palmer! The hunter now finds himself in the crosshairs. (laughs) Protesters descended on Walter Palmer's dental office Wednesday and vented their anger. This is you. (laughs) This is where you belong, Palmer. These pearly whites will be going elsewhere from now on. In an email to his patients, Palmer said... A substantial number of comments and calls from people who are angered by this situation and by the practice of hunting in general has disrupted our business and our ability to see our patients. Earlier this month, Palmer lured Cecil out of a protected reserve, then shot, beheaded, and skinned the lion, a national treasure in Zimbabwe. I'm just just, just so disgusted with that man. The hunt has now drawn the interest of the Justice Department. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service said... We are currently gathering facts about the issue and will assist Zimbabwe officials in whatever manner requested. Right now, lions are the only big cat that aren't protected under the U.S. Endangered Species Act. Conservation groups say hunting and poaching are a big reason why the lion population has dropped 60 percent over the last three decades. There are only about 32,000 lions left in the wild. American hunters, unfortunately, are responsible for over half of the African lions killed every year. On average, there are about 400 to 450 African lions killed by American citizens, and that's out of about 600 killed globally. Cecil was not the first lion killed by Palmer, an avid big game hunter. Palmer said he was told by local guides his hunt was legal. Extra day! But many protesters were still appalled by his methods. If you're going to do something like that, be a man and actually go out into the wild where the animal has the chance to get some revenge against you. Yeah, try that. Nice. But I was supposed to have a root canal tomorrow. I do feel (laughs) bad for the guy because his life must completely suck right now. I know. I feel bad for his kids and his wife. That's what sucks. I mean, I don't... It's unsavory it, how they're presenting it. It sounds like, oh, that's terrible. I don't know enough about the rules and regulations and how this normally, un- how you do big game hunting. I don't get it. But I don't know. I mean, I, to get yeah. like, oh, he's an asshole. And he, that's how you hunt bears. You you, you bait them. You yeah. that, It's not unusual to lure. I don't know. And that's horrible, too. It is. That's horrible. And it happens all the time. But that's what you do that with fish. That's how I meet my women. I think it's part of the... Bait them. Bait women. It's part of the conversation, though, is what kind of a tool are you that you need, you feel compelled Mm -hmm. to kill these majestic animals that aren't flourishing? Right. Yeah. Right. It's like, leave them alone. Do Do something else. Yeah. We talked about this yesterday. Start a fight club in the basement of your dentist office. Sweet. I mean, get a boner that way, you idiot. Yeah, he sounds like a total fool. I mean, are you kidding me? I mean, be honest, yeah. yeah. It, like I said, I, I have an acquaintance who does it, and he's got the heads all over it. And I'm like, I know, dude, I can't. No, I don't like it. I don't need to see the pictures. I don't approve of it. I don't like it. Yeah. It's icky. Oh. And and he spends tens of thousands oh, of dollars sure. to do this. And I, there's, yeah. My dad's a hunter. I mean, he, they deer hunter. My husband does, too. I That's just not my thing, but... 
it what well, with the deer you kind of have to because they are they overpopulate and it's worse for them if you don't hunt them but I don't know enough about all the rules and I I just get annoyed when I hear the head of PETA saying he should be lynched it's like really <laughs> oh, let's murder him now you yeah. idiot I mean like, yeah. it, it, it just sounds it gets a little I, bit I, radical I don't get the whole sport of hunting and where the enjoyment is in that and I get that oh but the the deer need to be weeded out you'd think that'd be a horrible assignment for the DNR to do not some ooh I can't wait for tomorrow well, they, eat, they eat them I mean they well, eat they 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 eat the so meat so the DNR and, weeds it out and then you go to the cub food and get your deer meat right but yeah I have no problem with people that hunt deer and eat it and that's the way they yeah. feed their families yeah. and that's how yeah. it's always been obviously but, I don't have outrage for that right. I don't get it I don't either I don't that is I've, not my no, idea of a good time no <laughs> I understand a that. quivering deer that's not quite dead so you have to put it out of its misery now we're gonna gut it and get all bloody mm -hmm. High five. High five. How about we just go to the sports bar and watch football and have beers? and you play Deer Hunter on the video game? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. There. That yeah. seems like so much more fun. How about we just take that money and go to a beach and have someone give you cocktails as your feet are at the sand? That's more my speed, but yeah. some guys, I mean, that's the thing. My, my well, dad I, never did growing up, but he, he, he goes with the guys now, and it's like mm -hmm. a great weekend, and they love, I think they just get to be away from their wives. Yeah. I think that, I'm they're probably not even tree. hunting. They're, they're like in a I'm Westin. Just, yeah, go to, that's fine. Go to <laughs> Vegas. I just, I don't get it. I don't get it. But they, yeah, I know people as well. That, yeah. They do that and they love it and they're like, "Hey, you want to go duck hunting?" I go describe duck hunting for me again. Well, it's <laughs> it's cold and drizzly and we sit in a boat and we shiver and freeze. You can't talk because you don't want to. And then sometimes we don't even get one fucking duck. I'm like, <laughs> "Yeah, you know, no." We drink though yeah. constantly. <laughs> yeah, with, the entire with time. weapons. <laughs> Great, yeah. awesome, good. Awesome. I've I've grouse hunted and I've pheasant hunted and it's basically just walking through fields, freezing to death. I, I, and the people I hunted with, apparently, I don't know anything about hunting, but the place they took us, we never saw a pheasant. Yeah. We never saw a grouse. We just walked through fields like, wow, that was a good uh, yeah. hunt. Are you going to, I learned words like posting and uh, uh, probably other words I've forgotten, but that's it. That's it. Yeah. yeah. I'll, uh, I'll take the beach in the Caribbean. I'll meet you there. I'll take Sounds podcasting. Good. Yeah. That's what I'll take. No, that can be bloody and brutal as well. <laughs> hey, I haven't heard enough about uh, Donald Trump. <laughs> So he's obviously going to begin that debate that's coming up. What is it? Soon, right? Yeah, like seven days. Eight yeah, days, like uh, which is amazing. I can't. I'm looking forward to that. That'll be that'll be spectacular. So the question was, is he going to have a debate coach, Donald? I am what I am. I am what I am. I mean, bit debate coach. Look, Romney had a debate coach, and Obama had a debate coach. Frankly, I thought Obama was terrible. Of course he But did. Yeah. Uh, Romney got worse and worse every time there was a debate. And by the time they had the third debate, he was uh, catastrophic. I don't know what happened to him. I have to be myself, Don. I, if it, and if it's not good enough, it's that's rusty. okay. I'll have, uh, <laughs> you know, I'll go on to other things. I'll ride into the sunset and do some more buildings and create some more jobs, and that's okay. I gotta be me. Oh, so there you go. It's working for him, though. What, oh, someone, yeah. Someone was saying, someone got asked, it was um, like, yeah, Charles Krauthammer, I think. They were saying, is he going to get presidential and do this seriously, or is he just going to go off? What What would be the reason for him to yeah. not continue what he's doing? Yeah, agreed. Right. You know? He's absolutely validated, and yeah. he's doing things. That I, I still can't believe that he, I, in my heart, that he is going to be our president. Oh, but he won't. That, but no, I just can't imagine he's even got a wild shot. But in the meantime, maybe there will be some positive in that it's so formulaic right now, and he's breaking the formula. Maybe that'll change things in the future. Maybe. Ah, I look forward to the debate. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what? Now, Donald, uh, he's going to have a little bit more ammo in the debate because, gosh darn you, illegal immigrant Mexican rapist murderers, they're now making news. Uh, did you hear about the latest? No. Well, here's a pleasant fellow immigrant Mexican rapist murderer who made news just uh, this week, I think yesterday. Juan Emanuel Razo was ordered held on $10 million bond Tuesday after he allegedly confessed to three crimes. Murder, attempted murder, and attempted rape of a teenager. Yeah, it's a a trifecta. Is that correct? Yes, sir. At the hearing, Razo couldn't produce his birth certificate. He communicated through an interpreter and his public defender who pled not guilty to the attempted murder charge on his behalf. You have a birth certificate? Yes. Where is it? 
It's in Mexico. The municipal court judge responded. This guy. Have somebody that we don't even know who he is, why he's in this country, why he's here illegally, and why he allegedly committed a murder. 60-year-old Margaret Kostelnik was found dead Monday inside her home. That home is near a bike path where Razo allegedly shot a 40-year-old woman in the arm. Razo surrendered to police hours later after a tense standoff. Nearly three weeks earlier, Lake County Sheriff's deputies say they questioned Razo after he was seen acting suspiciously in a golf course parking lot. Deputies say they contacted Border Protection that night about his status. So here's where it even gets trickier. So then uh, they knew they had a suspicious, seems to be illegal immigrant, and they... Illegal or legal? Not Ill illegal. 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 Yeah. Right. yeah. Yep. And they don't apprehend him at that point. They had conversations even with an interpreter on the phone with him at that time. But no detainer was uh, forthcoming. They would not issue a detainer. The Department of Homeland Security told CBS News, following the completion of his criminal proceedings and any sentence, ICE intends to take custody and pursue his removal from the United States. DHS also said Border Patrol agents offered to meet with the deputies on site. The offer was declined and the subject was released. Razo's arrest comes nearly a month after the death of San Francisco woman Kate Steinle. Yeah. She was allegedly killed by an undocumented Mexican immigrant with a felony record. Okay, so. Sanctuary cities. There's something to be said for maybe yeah. tightening it up because I'd well, be pissed if you had four felonies yeah. and then you shot my sister or my, yeah. The cooperation between ICE and local law enforcement has always been so weird and it's, it's come and gone and 2001 really helped because all of a sudden we, we were able to call them and talk to them directly. But otherwise they were like, yeah, pound sand, we're not helping you. And then it, it they got very quick at, uh, at, at reacting and returning calls and extraditing people who shouldn't be here. Um, but it seems to come and go a lot. And, uh, and it, where is it? Yeah, San Francisco, where they're just refusing to do anything. It's almost yeah. like they're in a standoff with ICE and other places, you know, like this, where ICE says, we'll come out, and the sheriff's department goes, no, we're good. We're good. It just makes no sense to me. So and suddenly it makes what Donald yeah. said that started all of his attention about the Mexican rapists and murders. It's like, well, now more. Yeah. His worrying yeah. off. I was going to say, he, he kind of was painted a broad stroke on that. Yeah, they were sending us all their rapists. And, no, they sent one. Come on. Calm down. And now two. Okay, two. Two out of a population of what? Eight million? Ten? Yeah. yeah, more than that. Eight million in Mexico City. Okay. See, we're good. Send them. Send them. It's a low ratio. Keep sending them. Do we check this guy's paper? We had someone just walk in. He looks familiar. He looks very familiar. Brian Miller's here, everybody. How's it going? You're muted. How do you so go? It's How's going it better going? now. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. 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 Sounds good. Better. Yeah, someone. I just, I just uh, illegally immigrated into the middle of the conversation. Yeah. I think. No, I nice. think you were invited. We you, we gave you amnesty and a visa. You built a wall in the door. I just <laughs> I just went around it. I tunneled under it. Nice. Because I had to bring some weed. Way to go. <laughs> Way to go, Chapo. Well played. Well played. Have we found Chapo? I love yet? Chapo. I'm a big Chapo fan. Yeah, I'm a big Chapo yeah. fan. <laughs> the dude who got out of prison and is running all the drugs. I think got out of prison is a little patronizing. Yeah. <laughs> He's a super big drug lord who escaped prison. I mean, admittedly, it probably was like, hey, Chapo, you want to leave? And he's like, yeah, yeah, all right, I'm going to leave now. No, he's more like, not till you get proper ventilation and lighting. Yeah, get the tunnel. Then it, get back to me. Chapo, you look warm. He, he's Russian? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry. I want to get a shirt that says number one El Chapo fan. That would be my, that's one of my shirt. I mean, I, he had to have been peeking at the tunnel. Nah, not ready yet. Yeah. You got to get some more lighting and ventilation. Totally. Yeah. You know, they would say he would just go to a restaurant and everyone would know it was him. And then they'd be like, all right, they would just say to the, to the, they would say to the crowded restaurant, no one can leave until Chapo's done eating because they don't want anyone to leave and then tell somebody where Chapo is and they yeah. come back and they kill him. And so he would just pay for everyone's <laughs> meal and everyone would be totally happy with it. So we like, oh, yeah, Chapo showed up. And so we couldn't leave the restaurant for like an hour and a half, but he paid for our meal and then we got to go. Can that's I get a to go bag for the prison? Yeah, Come operation on, is complete impunity. Classic Chapo. <laughs> classic <laughs> Chapo. Yeah, cla that guy. He's so wacky. He should open a franchise. Chapos. Or, or like an 80s sitcom. Chop it's Chapo. We could have like a. We could have like a. Or like. I'm getting out of here. That'd be a sketch phrase. <laughs> With the canned laughter. <laughs> yeah, he would always tunnel out of whatever, whatever situation he was in. <laughs> I, I mean, My in-laws are coming. Ay, ay, ay. I think none of us are allowed to do these voices. You're pretty tan, Colleen, but I don't think you're still allowed to do that voice. 
Sorry. Yeah. Do it, you ha- here's if you do it as a Russian voice, it's actually okay. okay. That yeah. should be the rule. Anytime that you do a voice of another person, of another race, you should just have to do a third racial caricature. Oh, good call. That way, you're not really offending anybody yeah. in particular. I need a graph. So like, anyone in particular, Putin, Putin might be ay ay ay. You know, but then if you're gonna do like, so I saw some of this black guy, and he was like, oh, cheerio, I need your money, or whatever. You know, it's like that's okay. You see. Very well. I'm part of the Crips. You can say racist things as long as the voice is mismatched. I see. That's wow. the rule. Cool. I think I think that's right. I'm I'm gonna look it up, but I think you're right. Yeah, I think you do. it's a technicality. Yeah. You're not offending anyone. Oh boy, me! I'm in the bloods. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. See, I'll pop a cap in your ass. <laughs> see, there you go. Wow. To- totally, totally fine. fine. You're totally right. fine. You're right. <clears throat> oh, we're solving all kinds of problems. Uh, today. Well, brilliant. The, uh, in- brilliant. My friend Simon, who listens to the show, by the way, is a black dude who's uh, British, but he's got the real Cockney accent. I can't understand him. That's got to be the best way to get laid in the world. That's what you're saying. Handsome black guy with a British accent. Idris Elba? I literally don't. I think you are handsome if you're a black guy with a British accent. I think it happens. But Idris Elba, I think, is probably the handsomest man in the world because of that. No, wow, that's an asterisk. Because if we're then going to imitate that black person with an English accent, we can't do the English accent. Ooh. Yeah. You, gotta now do you, get, the, you do the Mexico, you Mexico. Go back to an actual street language? Yeah. Or what do we do there? Maybe give him a Chinese accent. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Do you, you want to go ahead and do that racial tra- <laughs> racist <laughs> accent, Colleen? <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna Round table I, racism today I, on the Twin Cities Hit Show. That's do awesome. your best Mickey Rooney for us. <laughs> I've been in crib for a very long time. I'm sorry, Andy Rooney. <laughs> wrong, wrong Rooney. You would think yeah, Mickey yeah. Rooney would be the racist <laughs> one, but actually it was Andy Rooney. Yeah. Was it Andy, Mickey? Which was? It was Mickey. I Mickey. think they both probably had a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Have you ever ordered Chinese food? <laughs> Are you Seinfeld now? No, that's uh, Mickey Rooney. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, Rooney, when yeah, he did his everyone, little 60 yeah. minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, do you sound just like him. Andy, that was Andy. We're mixing our Rooney's up. Yeah. Too many Let's Rooney's. Let's throw Rooney Mara Round in there. Roundtable the Rooney racism here on the Twin Rosemary Cities. Rosemary Clooney. No, We're about to totally do an different. easy math problem here as we go around the world in our little segment. So a piece of uh, debris floats up on the shore uh, just off Madagascar. They're not quite yet willing to say it is that Malaysian flight of, what, 14 months ago that crashed? Uh But uh, Sully, uh, Captain Sullenberg, who was the miracle on the river or whatever, Mm -hmm. uh, he chimed in with an opinion. And here's what the... It's a section of the tailplane, I guess, the, Mm -hmm. the, the flap. Mm-hmm. That is floated up, but here's Captain Sully. The investigators, of course, will be attempting to confirm whether or not it was a part of MH370. When the part was manufactured by Boeing, a, a piece of it called a data placard, having Ooh. a number, a unique number, should have been affixed to it. If that data placard is still on the part, it would be one way of confirming whether or not it was on that airplane. Now, I'm not a huge fan of what's uh, Oprah's friend's name who's on Gale. Gail. Gail. Damn it. Um, But here's the math question that she poses, and it's brilliant. But Captain Sully, how many planes, how many 770 planes are missing in the world at this time? One. (laughs) (laughs) I think that that says a lot, don't you? I think that says a lot. I think that says everything. I think we're understanding. That's very well said, Gail. So the odds of... Very very condescending. (laughs) Yeah. So she's like, do we really need to see the serial number? Really? Just, she should be a lawyer. That she she asks that just like a lawyer. Actually, that'd yeah. be a great like that'd be like almost a great setup for a movie. Is they find a plane wreckage and then they go and they're like, wait a minute, it's, There's this is a different plane. Two. Oh. A second plane. That's a Shyamalan style mystery, right? Oh, Ryan Miller's okay. new movie treatment. All right. So yeah. they do need to see the serial number then. Maybe. Yeah. All right. Fine. It's like the Twilight Zone, you know. But then, because of the drift, they still aren't going to be able to pinpoint yeah. in this oh. vast ocean where well, the rest the of it is. <laughs> what are the chances we find a Malaysian guy on a life raft with a with with, with a coconut yeah, uh, yeah. cap wear on or something? Holy uh, zero! Shit! It's I think hot it's done. There. Does it really matter if we find the door? Don't worry, everyone. We yeah. found the door. Everything's fine. No, I'm pretty sure everybody's sleeping in uh, everybody's uh, you know in Davy Jones cocktail lounge anyway. Yeah. Oh. Okay. A little nice. Pirate of the Caribbean uh, reference yeah. there? Uh, nice. No. I, a little, see, Pirates of the Caribbean doesn't own Dave, Davy no. Jones's locker. Always been oh, there. Is Davy Jones's locker? Like that the, is that is the Davy Jones's locker is the is the place of the Briny Deep. That's the hot spot of the Briny Deep, and has been way before yeah. Johnny uh, Depp uh, decided to be gay. Keith Are Richards. you sure? The Beastie Boys even talked about Davy Jones's locker Absolutely. and their lyrics, which must have been something very different in the '70s when the Monkeys were very popular. Right, like they, Davy oh, yeah. Jones's locker. Well, I hey. totally want to go there. That sounds like a happening joint. So cute. So cute. Yeah. Adorable. And now he's dead, dead so I always yeah. thought when he died, they should totally bury him at sea so that Davy Jones could go to Davy Jones' locker. Go in his actual locker. He could go to his own locker. Wow. 
Let's just I all absorb that for a second. I'm just trying to play catch up. I need more coffee. Okay. Yeah, he had a he had a heart attack, yeah, right? That. He was yeah. like in his sixties. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he realized he wasn't in the Beatles this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> he dropped dead immediately. <laughs> I thought we were in the dole. <laughs> Do you know the uh, <laughs> trivia with Davy Jones and the Beatles, though? There's no. a bit of trivia. No, I don't. No. The Ed Sullivan Show, and I got uh, a copy of the uh, all the Beatles appearances on Ed Sullivan, like. The uncut with all the commercials, even. Oh, that, that's actually act. better. I would love to see those old yeah. commercials. Yeah. I bet that's wacky. great to watch. Yeah. So you know how the Ed Sullivan show was. Uh, Who they'd, doesn't? They'd have a wide range of variety. You'd have, you know, jugglers and magicians sure. right up next to the doors and uh, Broadway singers. Well, on the Beatles episode, they had the original cast uh, right from Broadway of the musical Oliver. <gasps> oh, he and played playing Oliver. the artful Dodger yeah. oh. is a young Davy Jones. Interesting. Nicely done. And the monkeys are kind of great, too, by the way. Yeah. I don't mean to impugn yeah. the monkeys. No, I actually enjoy I the, like the monkeys. I enjoy their work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They, they opened for I enjoy Jimmy. their no, work. No, either Jimi Hendrix opened for the monkeys yeah. or the monkeys opened for Jimi Hendrix. I can't remember. But with wow. an odd pairing. They kind of got relegated in, in history, though. It was kind of sad. They were they play they the reunited like three out of four of them playing Mystic without. Uh, well, uh, but that's everybody. Yeah, uh, I find a band that's not playing a the Beatles state, <laughs> state fair circuit. Yeah, it's because well, some. Yeah, half yeah, half half Mark David <laughs> Chapman <laughs> saved us all from a state fair appearance by two and a half of the Beatles. Pete Best would have come back. It would have been like John Lennon, Pete Best. <laughs> no way, John Lennon would have been selling like Paul McCartney. And had they had Mark had Lennon lived and George lived, I bet you the four of them would have done oh, something yeah. together. Sure, and and why yeah. not? To be honest, yeah. eh, what else Everyone's do you want to go? Everyone in. wants to do it. I don't even think it's a cashing. Everyone wants to see you get back together. And not only that, they're watching their competition, the Stones, constantly touring yeah. and yeah. stuff. They'd be like, we can still okay, do this, we guys. can do this. Oh, I just so watched you... Gimme Shelter last night. Oh, what a great movie! Yeah. Oh man, just vintage stones and all that Altamont footage is so crazy. Yeah. And they point oh, to the guy. Yeah. Yep. He's in that that it, the, the giant sash looks like a cape with like the Superman S on his chest and he's doing like that. And the Hell's Angels are looking at him like, we almost always kill guys when we see yes. them look like this. <laughs> Why are we protecting this one? Yeah. Like their homophobia and their need for free beer is really at odds throughout yeah. the film. That, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that you could feel the danger in that film. It just it's, all looks like chaos. It's one of the scariest things I've ever seen. It literally looks like a Hieronymus Bosch painting. And you know, for all the stuff that people give the Hells Angels for causing that trouble, which they did, you look at the crowd and those hippies that were on meth, they and the, it. those people were terrifying and absolutely would have beaten. They would have. They would have torn the stones apart if they didn't have serious security up there. Those mm. guys look like drugged up zombies. Like, Whoa. and I kept thinking as the performance continued, Mick, you're almost gasolining the fire here. Well, yeah, he doesn't do much. Uh, I haven't seen the movie. Have you seen the movie, Colleen? No. Okay, so well, okay, bits it's a documentary. Like it's a documentary about yeah. Altamont. Yeah. And, uh, of course, you know, the famous the end of the 60s uh, mm-hmm. when uh, the Hells Angels stabbed the guy to death during the free concert. Uh-huh. And it's, but it's literally the worst. It's like if you, bad vibes crystallized. It's <laughs> like a 90-minute-long a, a bad trip with great music. The only it. thing huh. wrong, that's bad about that is that more hippies didn't get stabbed. <laughs> <laughs> that is... More yeah, needed to be the wow. guy they stabbed pulled a gun and was pointing it toward Mick Jagger from about 10 feet away. So I'm not saying he deserved... Well, he was on meth, by yeah. the way. Yeah, so well. it's like, I'm not saying he deserved to be stabbed per se. <laughs> but it's not like they were just like, hey, that flower child, I don't like the circles he's dancing in. Let's wrap <laughs> yeah, yeah. If there's Did they ever have a reason to be stabbed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Meth was around back then, huh? Yeah. yeah. But then the, the, um, the Hells Angels and the other, their other comp- competition and biker gangs, they were all... That's a meth... Thing. It was Wasn't crank. That thing? It was just crank. It was less. Well, I guess yeah. in the 80s, and it turned more meth. Yeah. I know my dad worked a lot of undercover stuff yeah. going after the Hells Angels. Who were the other bi- rival bikers? It was the uh, Hells Angels and the. Um, uh, maybe I dreamed it. I don't know. No, I don't remember the names of it. I'll think of the it. The Sons of Anarchy. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. We're in the Grandfathers of Anarchy. This is way back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're showing. Anarchy. It's just anarchy. Song. Just anarchy. Yeah, it's a crazy documentary. It's it's grainy, it's raw, it's sweaty. It's mm. oh, it's amazing. It's one of the best documentaries I've ever seen. And really, just, and pure con- pure concert footage at least. And just yeah, it's, it's like they well, they happen to be there in the right place, right time, you know. And they that ultimate footage is really. I just did not expect it to be that scary. I was like this yeah. is scary. These hippies are terrifying. I see. I was watching that. I was like, I totally get why people were genuinely afraid of hippies now. Like there was some real, real freaks out there. And everybody's like, nah, it's cool, peace and love, man. And you're like, not in that guy. That's not what that guy's thinking. 
and they were hoping to have like a Woodstock of the West Coast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was. It, it's interesting because you also see what it, how hard it is to put on a music festival because you, know, you get that whole background where they're like trying to figure out how to get all these people in, and it's just a just a nightmare. When they even talk about Woodstock and what a great peaceful love, they totally trashed that guy. Oh yeah, I mean, they were little assholes. They were little spoiled. I would totally have been a square. Deadhead. I would have been like the crew-cutted guy yes. who was like hitting hippies with a sock full of quarters yes. if I was in the 50s. I would have been the squarest guy because I, I guarantee you those assholes would have pushed me in the exact opposite direction. Oh, yeah. Hippies were the worst. For, well, <laughs> I'll tell you what. For George Harrison to go down to Haight-Ashbury in the heyday because uh-huh. it's supposed to be this wonderful place, yeah. he was like, holy fuck. You guys are clueless. Yeah, and he got the yeah. hell out. I well, mean, that's what the Stones say in the documentary after they see Altamont. The, the, I think it was, um, oh, Charlie Watts, the drummer. And he's like, well, we've heard about this violence. Oh, sorry. He's, oh, we've heard about this violence in America. <laughs> <laughs> see, i got to do a different racist accent. Yeah. Uh, but he's like, we, we, he's like, we had no idea it was really. Like, when we saw it, we were like, oh, my God, I can't believe they live like this. There's yeah. this violence at the yeah. surface all the time. Oh, yeah. And that was back then. Yes. Yep. And Charlie, that's well done. Charlie Watts, wow, what a character he is. Too. Oh, he's just yeah. so tame and mellow and he's yeah. kind of just, he just, seems like he's like the uh, xylophone player <laughs> for a symphony orchestra yeah. like yeah. the timpani player like yeah. the softest gentlest yeah. thing it's like no I've played rock and roll drums for the greatest band I'm still waiting for the uh, the biggest hoax ever in music history to be revealed because when you go to the Stones like I did this again this time around I will always go to the Stones it doesn't look like that old man is actually putting out the percussion you're hearing yeah yeah I'm like, yeah. there's got to be someone else. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it can't be just this guy all straight backed in little hand motions. It's like so a, we can yeah. underneath him in like a sealed yeah. tank <laughs> yeah. pounding away. Yeah. He's had a stunt drummer for like 30 years, <laughs> I he's, think. He's like the mildly bemused parent who's watching the kids wrestling on the floor going, oh, there they go and again. I'm not too far off because I got to tell you, uh, I think I've told this story a couple of times, but we went to uh, Fleetwood Mac. Mm-hmm. Two tours ago, they were at the XL, so it was like a year and a half ago. It was without before Christine McVie decided mm. to come back, but it was still, you know, the others: Lindsey Buckingham, Mick Buckingham. Uh, no, um, uh, who's the Mick drummer? Fleet- oh. Mick, Mick Fleetwood. Mick, Fle- Mick Fleetwood. Yeah, yeah. Lindsey Buckingham. So he's he's up there, you know, in his gangly, muppety kind of arms and flailing hair. We had shitty seats. Thank you, XL. We yeah. were in a suite, like right next to the stage they actually should, probably shouldn't even use the suite so we were actually able to see behind the stage we we're like at the halfway point we got direct profile of the band but we could actually see behind the stage and i'm like looking at this drum set set up on the floor behind stage like an elaborate drum set and this guy playing during the concert and i'm like i told my wife i go look at this look at this there was a guy behind stage doing most of the pounding wow while Mick was in the spotlight doing wow. rudimentary drumming. Oh, funny. He, and cork, he corks his sticks. He's yeah. kind of like the Yoko Ono playing in the Plastic Ono band when they would unplug her oh. keyboard. Oh, oh, yes. And let her have the yeah. front. Yeah. yeah no, that's, no he, he, yeah. The, the, this drummer was like everyone in Millie Vanilli. He was the music. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. And I'm like, oh. You know what's crazy about Millie Vanilli? If, you, if you're not actually going to sing, why don't you get some better music to pretend to sing? Like, they could have picked anything in the world to pretend to sing, and they picked a... Uh, don't you just blame I'll it on the I'll never forget the day I we love met. You. Girl, I'm gonna miss you. Oh, Grammy girl, I'm award gonna miss winning. You. Sorry, I got to do it a different night. Well, they're Jamaican, so... But are they Jamaican? No, or they were they, English. Wouldn't it be funny if it actually turned out they were white guys in masks pretending to be Jamaican, the, pretending it, to sing It was like, the Wayan brothers. Yeah. They're or early Millie Vanilli. It was, it, was, yeah. it was three French little people in a giant <laughs> trench coat all sitting on top of each other's shoulders. <laughs> with a mask pretending to be a Jamaican guy pretending to sing a song that was British. Are they both dead now? No, just the one. Is it Millie or Vanilli that's dead? Doesn't matter. Did, did, or, or, is, was there a Millie and a Vanilli? Was that how it worked? Yeah. Yeah. Was one Chuck Millie and one Vanilli? I think one, at least one is dead. I always thought Millie, Millie Vanilli sounded like Miami Vice translated for a foreign country. Yeah. Like that was that was like some sort of other version. They actually are coming back. The one guy came back and he's actually singing now. Like within the last Wait, year. Wait, West German based. I didn't know that. 
West Germany. Mm. West Germany was the good one, right? Yeah, yeah. East Germany was yeah, the good one. Germany was I always got to check one. that. You know, you know, some people have to hold their left hand up and, and put the L to make sure they, they remember their left from their right. I'm like that with East and West Germany. I'm like, wait, which was the good one? I need a little... Uh... Like, right. I get that. Listen to our music. We didn't kill so many Jews. I, I don't... It is interesting that socialism is still considered a concept when, like, there was a line... Like, we had this thing where we took a country and we, like, well, what if one and a half one tries one thing and one half tries the other thing? Yeah. And still, it's I thought amazing. we I thought we did that we experiment. That like, what if we like we've done that? We've in states in America. Like, all right, this state does this, and that state does that, and then the uh, one doesn't work. Why don't we go like, all right, hey, state that has the thing that doesn't work, you got to do the thing that the state that well, works. Kind does. of, they do do that now, don't you? With like the super high tax ones and the lower tax ones, and see how different it is. I guess I think yeah, they should they listen more. Illinois, I come from Illinois, and it's a terrible state. It's and then I moved to Minnesota. I'm like, hey, Illinois, why don't you just do some stuff Minnesota does? Right. It seems to work for them. They're like, nah, <laughs> we're just gonna send all of our thugs your way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, pretty we'll much. Well, well, thank you, Barry. That experiment is happening right now with the Obamacare in the red states and the blue states. And they're like, oh, that's true. Yeah, California is right. having great success. And I'll, you know, go to some of the red states and it's like, ouch, they won't let us have free health care or yeah, whatever. It's crazy. That, yeah, it's like we have we have these direct comparisons. I feel like they should uh, make more money. Us. Money was stopping it from happening. People yeah. are benefiting in country clubs and corporate executive positions. And what? Take a break. All right. Speaking of socialism. Yeah. All right, Karl Marx. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I agree. Bernie with you, Sanders but... much? Uh, yes, I love Bernie Sanders. Let's take a break. The Twin Cities Hit Show. We'll be right back. Don't let your computer problems drive you mad. We are MacMen, Minnesota's premier tech consultants and problem solvers for Macs, mobile devices, troubleshooting, training, and much more. No more dragging your computer all over town because we come to you. We love making house calls to your home or small business. MacMen, call 612-345-8005. The term foodie can sometimes come across as a tickle pretentious. BT and Lydia are here to demystify the term and reclaim it for the sake of good food. Their weekly podcast brings in fellow foodies and culture creators from the Twin Cities to talk about all things food. Find this duo only on the Alive and Social Network. The one and only Chart House. Your destination, whether dining for two, drinks with friends, or making up for that night with friends join us at the chart house for brunch dinner or drinks hi i'm josh ripper and i'd like to invite you to my restaurant and i'll buy half your dinner go to charthouserestaurant.com to find out more visit charthouserestaurant.com today for your special offer and then come visit chart house in person your table is waiting the rusty gatenby review is the entertaining show about entertainment from movies music and more award-winning tv guy rusty gatenby and his review is the podcast with the biggest cast in entertainment part of the alive and social network you can get that minnesota connection to hollywood and beyond any time of the day or night simply by clicking on the rusty review.com that's the rusty review.com part of the alive and social network <laughs> Let's face it, summer is short here in Minnesota, and we want to fill it up with concerts, ball games, and good times. Well, for a great night, beep, 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 yeah. log on to Blue and White, blueandwhitetaxi.com. Hey there, everybody. I'm Rusty Gatenby, your TV buddy, and I'm always up for a good time, but I've learned planning is part of the party. Do the pregame, do the pre-concert, and do the pre-plan. Pre-plan your ride, that is. Log on to blueandwhitetaxi.com. With the biggest fleet of taxis in town, you can enjoy every last drop of summer and get home safely and on time. No worries about money and tips. You set it all up before the fun with blueandwhitetaxi.com. Yeah, make it a great night. Log on to the blue and white, blueandwhitetaxi.com. No shirt, no shoes? Well, <laughs> that's your problem. Listening to the Twin Cities Hit Show. 
Say it fast three times. We just dare you. Time's gone inside out. Time begins to start. All right, well. Was that blur? Oh, the music? Yeah. Spoon. 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 Aww. Yeah, I like Spoon. Because I'm a communist. Cami. Pinko. Is that a romantic reference? You like one reference? spoon that we all share. <laughs> We all pass it oh, around to eat soup. Oh, well yeah. played, sir. Oh. Nice. Wow. Nice. It's a little tarnished and old, but, but in we heaven, like it. They're feeding each other. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? No. Or now you lost. The guys with the long spoons. The the the, 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 the you, it's a parable. It's like they go to hell and there's all these guys and they've got bowls of soup, but they've got these like five foot long spoons and they're frustratedly they're trying to oh, eat the yeah. soup, but all the, their whole hell they can never eat. They're they're hungry. Uh, but in heaven they all have the exact same setup, but they're feeding each other. Uh, it's this old stupid parable. The doctor was a woman. You know that kind of thing. Right? <laughs> they were all pigs. They all had pig faces. Remember that. The, it's a Twilight the Zone. Twilight. It's not really a parable, but oh, okay. no. I, I, yeah. I know what you're like talking it. about. I'm with you. I'm with you. Weirdly enough, yeah. I'm right. We're on board. Uh, <laughs> so I have two uh, stories. One is uh, one is horrible. One is like, oh, uh, oh my God, uh, they were so lucky. Which one should I play first? Horrible. Start horrible play and the horrible lucky. One. I love horrible. horrible. You like horrible? It's a send. Did, did you hear the 911 call? No. The 911 uh, caller who just like, yeah, deal with it yourself. Oh, oh. yes. It's, yeah, this is in my uh, consciousness somewhere. Yeah. yeah I, uh, I, well, I, we'll listen to it. Basically, uh, it was a drive-by shooting. So oh, this yes, guy yes, yes. is like a high school football player. They were at a Starbucks, and his friend, I guess, I don't think they were boyfriend, girlfriend, mm -hmm. but she's on the phone to 911, and basically at the end of it, the 911 was like, yeah, you deal with it. Listen to this. Yeah. It's hard to hear, sorry. She's encouraging him to breathe. Okay. There you go. Good job, Danny. Is he breathing? He's barely breathing. How many times is the f telling you? Okay, you know what, ma'am? You can deal with yourself. I'm not going to deal with this, okay? No, my friend is dying. Wow. And the kid died. Wow. Well, okay, I, uh, the only thing I can say, and I, it's not a defense, <laughs> is, is that he probably didn't like the F word. And he, <laughs> so I mean, what? I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm not defending him, but I'm saying that that's probably his, like, oh, you're going to swear to me? We're done. But he didn't even word this that well. It's more just... of a story than the lion story. I'm yeah. Sorry. Oh, agree. Why is yeah. this not, like, well, everywhere? Maybe it, maybe so, what's be. the follow up? Is there any more? Then? Well, the guy, uh, the 911 operator, uh, resigned. <laughs> uh, he might be in the wrong He had job. been doing it for 10 years. Wow. He did have training. He was a former fire yeah. fighter. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, really, yeah. dude. Oh, what was the quote him. again? Uh, you're I'm not, you're going to have to deal with this yourself. Yeah. Because he kept saying, is he still breathing? And he yeah. kept asking that. And she's yeah. like, how many times do I F and yeah. have to tell I know. you? Which yeah. I would have yeah. said, too. Give yeah. me a break. And wow. when you're calling 911, hello, just by its nature, you're in high, stressful situation. Sure. So that guy's... Offended by the F word? Yeah. Fuck him. Yeah. Whoa, you watch your language game. Hey, I'll you cut know you off too. Maybe you should deal with this yourself, Rusty. <laughs> get up, get up, and get down. 911's a joke in your town. <laughs> oh. You remember that? Yes. No. Remember that? That was yeah. a hip hop song from the, what, nice. real late 80s, really nice? Yep. Oh. Mm. Get up, get, get, get I never down. understood that as a kid. I was like, why are they against 911? It was like 20 years later. I was like, oh, because 911 doesn't show up to their neighborhood. Oh, social commentary. Yeah. Yeah. I just thought it was like a weird anti PSA when I was a kid. It had a great dance yeah. beat. I don't get this premise. I'm white. Yeah, sorry. They come to every time. But if you're I white, call. you got to do a different accent. Yeah, yeah. There's got to be. <laughs> what you talk about? <laughs> There's got to be a horrible turnaround with 911 operators to begin with. No. Oh, yeah. There's not. No, but I know. Some. There's not? Yeah. No, it's, yeah. I it's... did that job for a while. I did that for like four years. Yeah. Part-time. But it was it was an awesome You were job. a cop and 911? Yeah. Yeah. They This was back in the day when they were not deemed essential employees, so the 911 operators could go on strike, and there'd be no one manning oh. the phone. So they paid a bunch of us cops. I mean, There's kind of a vetting process, but they paid a bunch of us cops to... Um, be trained so that if they ever went on strike, we could fill in. But we got to grab all the overtime. So I I go work an eight hour shift, chained into my shorts and t shirt, and go answer nine one calls and talk on the radio. It was a blast. That but makes sense though, because cops are more yeah. prone to you know you're used to stressful understand. situations, so yeah. you're easier to be calm and everything. Yeah. No, that... no, cops suck at the job. Oh, they, they really? Because really, did you there's... keep trying to shoot black people yeah. over the phone? Kept pointing my yeah, <laughs> it, pointing. You can't do that. Pointing a gun at the caller when it's a phone is does not. I know. Work I just out. accused Chuck of being a racist are, cop who shoots. His why are you people. tasing your receiver? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I don't know. It looks suspicious to me. You're like, dude, dude. I think this might be part of the problem. When they're giving them advice, they're like, all right, hold his head back and then tase him. 
down. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> you know, you can't. Be, every, all the cops' first question is, what race is the victim? What race is the victim? You're like, what, clear, what is this person? Clear his airway. What? All right, and then shoot him. Well, well, you, you seem like you'd be good at it. Was that your first experience in podcasting? Were you like, yeah, pretty uh, much. That's what like, it was. It was all typing and like, calm down. Like with Rusty, calm down. You're running calm material down. by the. Yeah. Look, I know you're hurting, <laughs> but I got a little tight five on uh, George W. H. W. Bush. You know, because it was a while ago, right? Yeah, but so. everything's a crisis. I mean, that was the funny part because I'd been a cop for what 10, 15 years at this point, and my trainer, I. I was trained in in like two, three days. I was a really good typist. That's the hardest part of 9 1 dispatching is typing. Oh. Um, and so I was like, she's like, yeah, you're good. But so I remember one of the first calls I got, this lady calls uh, Bloomington 9 1. Oh my God, I need the police. I need it right now. You need to send help. We need rescue. We need everything. I'm like, oh, and I look at my chair. I'm like, oh, it's the big one. Get ready. Going to close the channel, put out the tones. This is the big one. I look at, okay, what's wrong, miss? There are four baby raccoons stuck in a gutter. I'm like, oh, mm. come on. How many, how, what percentage of 9 1 calls are that? Or something. You know, my son won't listen to me. Yeah. Or, you know, or a very high percentage. I didn't get barbecue yeah. with my chicken yeah. nuggets. Yes. Right. Yeah. I just, yeah. I just assume it's like seventy yeah. percent total BS calls, and of course yep. the other thirty percent are like, uh, you know, oh my god, there are nine babies on fire. And you're like, no. ah. not even, not even. Yeah, no, I'd say a really low percentage of those high stress calls. When they come in, yeah. you get amped up, and you, you have Is a it bullshit. One meter. an hour, one I a bet. day, or oh maybe couple of days. I mean, like, those, like, someone just got shot, sent everyone. That's well, I bet sure. zero of them are nine babies on fire. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I had one with seven, but I think that's my record. I, 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 hold, I still hold the record for seven babies. Is that cult <laughs> still in town? <laughs> Gosh. Yeah. Um, Crazy. Th- th- what we could do, I used to, some of my favorite stories were the pranks I used to pull, because I was a cop, and I knew all the cops, and I had this relationship with them, and we used to be able to direct dial their radios and put out the emergency tones and and Put out a fake call. And as you know, I'm a bit of a prankster. A bit of a prick. So, yeah. Sounds like so a horrible idea. I would direct out their radio, and I would, this is how I was always, Doot. need cars to start for the Radisson East. We have reports the hotel's on fire, and people are jumping out the window. And, of course, the cop's like, oh, my God. And, and I'd think, copy. And then I'd say, uh, oh, dude, I just got you. I'm totally kidding. Totally kidding. Oh, and while I was calling you, my partner was calling you on the regular channel. So then they'd clear out their radio, and they'd get on the radio. And, oh, who are you calling? And then I'd, I'd answer, and I'd say, uh, no, no one's calling. So I'd double make a floor. You're right. Them. Policemen yeah. do make horrible 911 operators. 911 yeah. yeah, is a joke in your town. The <laughs> yeah. song was totally prophetic. <laughs> it was so fun. Those were the days. Yeah. Oh, There's another my parable Lord. about yeah. crying wolf. I what, think. Is yeah. the, uh, what is the best 911 story that you have? What is the m- most dramatic or the most successful moment you had as a 911 person? Uh, there was a, my, again, my first night as a 911 dispatcher, there was a huge, this isn't a, it probably doesn't make for a good story, but I was proud of myself. It was just a 911 call that ended up in a car chase. The guy, you know, multi-jurisdictional thing where where I was in charge of the radio with the statewide radio frequency and the responses, everyone went on this car chase. Yeah, I mean, it's... So you had to corral everyone and get yeah. information flowing correctly yeah. and... It's really hard. Finish I mean, your donut at the same yeah, time. Yeah. <laughs> Did 911 operators used to try to, like, over-dramatize a scenario hoping they'd get on that William Shatner show? <laughs> Was, like, every 911 call just basically, like, an open mic hoping to, like, you, I, got, I got a five spot on TV. I got a five... I got a spot on... Shatner's coming down. I'm going to get to talking to the thing. <laughs> Is there any four-year-olds that you can get on the phone? <laughs> that's the ones that always make it. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, yeah. or the, the, the dog dialed 911 yeah. and then barked the, you know, barked Morse code for diabetes into the phone and they <laughs> sent insulin immediately. You just try to come up with profound statements during But here is, if you, if you do the dog voice, you got to do it as a cat. Yeah. yeah. So oh, can... Keep it with our theme. Keep a with a the Russian cat. Yeah. Very nice. I'm all about yeah. callbacks that everyone forgot and no one cared yeah. about. No, I'm, I'm, I'm dead with you. Uh, yeah. All right, so here's the other one. Uh, you're a pilot, right? I mean, I'm, hypothetically, let's put it out there. Oh, I, did I ever tell you I was a pilot part time? I was just going to say, how many skills does Chuck have? Yeah. You're the whole goddamn yeah, A-team <laughs> at this point. <laughs> He's like... I was a strike breaker. I just did a You would time. think as a pilot, there's a couple of things you need to do. Don't, uh, don't show up drunk, right? Uh, yeah. Disagree. Disagree. Uh, Agree to disagree. One of the things I think you should do is make sure you got a full tank of gas. This Plane oh. load. Did you hear about this? Mm. No. Flying out of Vegas uh, has to flying to Fargo, but uh, yeah. this little penny just for a vacation like weekend. Hell. I got to get out of this yeah. Vegas, <laughs> this Vegas boredom and go to Fargo where it's happening. Yeah, no, the oh. bunch of Fargoites getting their free. Or they're not their free, but their flight back from oh. Vegas. Gross. And uh, this guy, uh, evidently the airline company, uh, scrimps and they don't 
put in extra gas. They put in just enough gas. Well, evidently, he idled too long in Vegas because he was not. He was very. He was on fumes coming into Fargo. Here's the exchange with the tower. Yeah, listen, we're on bingo fuel here in about uh, probably uh, three, three to four minutes. And I. He says we're bingo fuel in three to four minutes. I assume bingo means bad. Yeah, not that you won. Yeah. You <laughs> yeah. didn't win the prize, Ethel. The pilot of Allegiant Flight 426 with 144 passengers on board Whoa. warns the tower he's running out of fuel. But the airport was closed for the Blue Angels to practice for last <laughs> weekend's air show. Air traffic controllers first suggested the pilot divert elsewhere. We don't have any, enough fuel to go anywhere else, or I'm going to have to declare an emergency and come in and land. There will be a window of uh, opening in about uh, 20 minutes uh, for landing. Yeah, I don't have 20 minutes. <laughs> the flight was originally scheduled to arrive shortly before the airport shut down, but it was delayed leaving Las Vegas. The FAA says the flight crew should have been aware the airport wasn't open. Your company just that should have been aware of this for uh, a number of months. Okay, yeah, it's just... Uh, it, uh, We'll follow up on that. That's all well. Should the airline pilot I ever find him something? All this pilot wants to say is, can we talk about this later? Yeah. Can we work on the scheduling details later? I have a very pressing problem. Duly exactly. noted. Have you been talking to my wife? You yeah. should make a That's lot of notes, say. and we can have a meeting about this tomorrow. <laughs> this reminds me of when I would be running long gas, and my wife would be next to me. She was a bit of a neck. And I'd be like, I didn't put enough gas in the car. And I'd tell her, like, um... We're running a little low on gas. You should have planned it. Right. That's the same thing. That, oh. oh. And then put this shut over the Blue Angels. It's like, oh, we've got, we've got to remind some football stadium of our military might to start it off. They've got to run a practice drill and burn off, you know, yeah. seven dinosaurs worth of Jet A it's into the of, atmosphere. It's kind of the same scenario as the, the story you just did. They were both, like, totally yeah. not helpful. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's like, I know. Can you imagine if the sorry. 911 guy had gotten a new gig in Fargo? <laughs> Sir, I'm sorry. Handle like it yourself. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, that's the funny part because they have to keep this real formal form of speech. They're basically saying you're a complete dickhead and you're an irresponsible bastard. So, uh, yeah. We only have three minutes. We'll have an opening in about 20. Yeah. So if you want to <laughs> pull over somewhere. If you wanna, there's, a, there's a farm field over there if you just want to bring it down. That's great, United 1610 Heavy, that you have a lot of people, but we have the Blue Angels. So. In this type of situation, wow. when you are making a normal flight, you have no diversion, you have no odd weather. And to be coming into an airport with bingo fuel, very, bingo. very dangerous. They gotta pick a scarier word than bingo. I wanna start using that. Want something. Yeah. You know what? Uh, if you look at my financial situation, bingo. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bingo, I think we can so do that. So now you know. You, now you've learned a term. Yeah. You can say we're on bingo fuel, yeah. we're on bingo. That sounds happy though. It should be like balderdash fuel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they should call it like motherfucker! <laughs> that should be the name of it. <laughs> What's the scenario? Motherfucker fuel! Motherfucker fuel! <laughs> We're going to die fuel. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's not funny. So I'm going to go uh, screen Vacation after this, the movie oh, reboot. Because I know you're a movie guy. Yeah, I'm not uh, holding on hopes for that one. You, uh, when you weren't here at the top of the show, we talked about the first Vacation movies. Did you like those at all? I love Christmas Vacation. I think Christmas okay. Vacation's yeah. a holiday classic. I think the original Vacation's funny, but it's kind of a... It's, it's, it's one notch above Kentucky Fried movie in terms of a pl coherent plot. I mean, it's basically yeah, a series yeah. of sketches. I love yeah. Kentucky Fried, but it's basically a series of sketches that are kind of a movie. But they're funny sketches. They're just good with good lines. But oh. that, the, the, like European Vacation is god awful. Oh, horrible. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. a terrible they movie. They didn't yeah. even, the real kids in that one. No. Well, there's never yeah. been the same Rusty. Yeah, that's right. Mm, yeah. Not, not this Sorry, Rusty. Rusty. Yeah. Have you ever noticed that every, every vacation movie, Johnny Galecki is the hey, best Rusty. Just so you know, this and isn't the Ed same Helms. Rusty. Yeah. <laughs> this is a different Rusty, too. <laughs> every time. Yeah. And now Ed Helms is the new Rusty. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I thought Tom Cruise was fantastic in the latest Mission Impossible. Those are fun movies. It's He's great. always pretty good in those. Good does he run with his hands? Does he drive a motorcycle and does he run with his hands like in karate chop motion, but he runs with his elbows fucking jacked up? That's what he does. I believe it, that's, he does. That's it, just common sense. And not yeah. only does he ride a motorcycle again in this one, but he does it so believable. It's not like he's on a flatbed trailer like they do with he's the... He's riding the motorcycle. The, he's actually riding, oh, and it, it looks like highway speed. It doesn't look... Bed up, kind of. Wow. No, I mean he's he, and he's got a he's a good rider, rider and a good runner. He's got that Tom Cruise run. I'd recognize that run. Plus, anyway. there's a car chase in this that I would say is even better than everyone you know goes gaga over the French Connection. Mm -hmm. And they do something interesting. They drop the soundtrack during this this car chase. Oh, so it's perfect. just the sound of motor crunching metal. Oh, nice. Adrenal adrenaline yeah. gears shifting, yeah. wheels yeah. squealing. What was the movie that just did that? That it, Need for Speed. They, they they did a nice job of that. 
yeah, it wasn't it was a great movie. A, it was a stupid movie. It was a stupid movie, but the car chase so stuff was good because they. Flaws, you're like, what? Really? Come on. Oh, it wasn't a good movie, but the car chase stuff was yeah. pretty interesting in that. But I think the Born, the second Born movie, has a great car chase that nobody gives attention to when they go through the tunnel. That's great. They just announced another Born movie. Matt Damon is returning. Mm -hmm. When are they going to call it Reborn? They, someone's got to call it Reborn, right? <laughs> And then they announced the second their... best exotic marigold born. <laughs> There's going to be another Mission Impossible. They're going to start shooting next summer. So those two movies are out this weekend. I recommend Mission Impossible. I'll let you know about the vacation reboot when you tune into WCCO on Friday morning at midday. In the meantime, Mick Sterling, you're listening to Mick Sterling. He's going to be joining us at the Chart House this afternoon. Yeah. Sands the Stud Brothers. Yeah. I'm not sure. I might have to be uh, one of his stud brothers okay. for yeah. the event. Stud brother. Stud well, brother. Chris Maddock will be there to also be a stud brother. Oh, sweet. He's bringing his guitar. Cool. So hopefully they can. And Hesley will be there. Hesley will be and there. It's another beautiful sunny afternoon. Mm -hmm. So take mm -hmm. a uh, blue and white taxi down to the Chart House in Lakeville at 5:30 for uh, our weekend edition uh, of the. Twin City Sit Show. Yeah, but don't drink your Third Street Brew House in the back of the Blue and White Taxi. That's as good. delicious as it is. Put it in a sippy cup. They don't know. Yeah, that's a good point. New Orleans style, the plastic to go cup. Yeah, that's yeah. it, exactly. All right. Okay. That's it. Yeah. We've done it. Yeah. Make it a great Thursday. It's a beautiful day out there. What are you going to do now? Um, Nothing. I got nothing to do today. I'm, I'm pretty free. It's pretty great. Good. I saw good. South Paul yesterday. That sucked. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I appreciated I Jake's left. commitment to becoming a boxer, but I... Yeah. St I Worst was... boxing choreography since Rocky won, maybe? Yeah. The, literally, the twist of the movie is he learns how to block a punch at the end. <laughs> literally. <laughs> they go, wow. they, literally, he blocks a punch, and one of the announcers goes, he blocked a punch! He blocked a punch! Like, he was 48-0 and 0 before this <laughs> film was to start. He's never blocked a punch, and he's a... Yeah. Aww. And he, by the way, boxes with his right hand. He's not a left-handed person. That movie. Yeah, he, so why is everything he does in the movie, he does with his right hand. He holds bottles. He signs contracts. Everything right-handed. Huh. The movie's called Southpaw. Oh, oh boy. nice. Oh boy. Oops. See Daisy. There's my capsule review. And Colleen, we'll see you yeah. next week. Yeah, and if you want to see me on Saturday, I'll be at the New Hope Cinema Grill. That's right. I'm gonna be at New Hope. plug that. I'm gonna be at New Hope Cinema Grill soon. I'm doing that on August the. Uh, I mean Duluth on the 15th. I'm at New Hope Cinema Grill on August the... Okay, it's a little ways away. It's the 29th. <laughs> 29th. Still, of August. Of August. Okay, that's, God, that's right. We're into August already. Of, of course, you can see me in uh, Bismarck, North Dakota tonight, or Glenwood, Minnesota on Friday, or I'm doing a little guest at the House of Comedy Sunday night. Hmm. Jenny Zagrino is there. She's yeah. very funny. Yeah, she was our guest the other day. That's how oh, she's great. Yeah. yeah. I did the Laughing Skull Festival with her. Yeah. I mean... Not just her. It was a lot of other people, but we met there. Where are you at tonight? Uh, I'll be in Bismarck, North Dakota. I don't, For... remember, I don't remember the venue. Oh, yeah. Okay, We'll find you. Yeah, you'll find me. All right. Otherwise, we'll see you at the Chart House. 5.30 tonight with this guy, Mick Sterling. All right? Make it a good day, everybody. I got a heart full of trouble, a house full of sin. Things are bad as an ever man. If trouble was money, I'd have more money. Than any man should Well, I'm open for business In your neighborhood Blues is my business And business is good